Now, the main story in Australian politics continues to be the uh, citizenship crisis. Now, it's actually being referred to as a constitutional uh, crisis, and even uh, Wikipedia puts it on par with uh, Australia's uh, constitutional crisis in 1975, which culminated with the Governor-General dismissing Prime Minister Gough Whitlam. So the latest is we have uh, John Alexander, who is the Liberal MP for Bennelong, which is a, most people believe, is a marginal seat. He was uh, suspected to have uh, British citizenship by descent on uh, on the fact that his father was uh, born in Britain, Albert, all the way back in 1907. So he's decided yeah. to uh, resign. We're not 100% sure whether it's confirmed he is a British uh, citizen, but uh, if he is, that makes him uneligible under Section 44 of the Constitution because the High Court found that citizenship by descent is counted as dual citizenship and ignorance is uh, no excuse. Uh, the, the questions are now continuing about a num number of other MPs. Every day there's a new MP who uh, questions are raised about their citizenship status. And uh, Turnbull and Shorten disagree on a disclosure requirement for all MPs. Turnbull wants it to be uh, all MPs to uh, disclose documentation within 21 days. Shorten wants it to be five days. So there's this standoff between the two leaders. and. It's, we, we don't know where it's going to go next because it's, it's get, if, in the mind of most people, it's, bec it's, it's beyond just, uh, you know, a political storm. Like, there, this is a real problem for uh, you know, uh, Australia's governance. Well, absolutely, because what you have is, is it's, not a, it's not a war issue. We have, and the reason that it's being called a crisis is because it's absolutely a crisis. What issue do we tackle first? Do we tackle the issue that we have a bunch of people in our government who are in your government, rather, probably not my government, that uh, got in through false pretenses, whether it was, uh, whether they were aware that they were not qualified to be uh, in the position or not. And then we have to look at the other side to how we resolve this. And that's one of the more complicated issues, I think. So what are we going to do? Are we going to allow people that have uh, dual citizenship to continue to do their work, especially in a, in a culture as diverse as Australia's. It's not a, a stretch of the imagination to think that people have um, sort of uh, varied backgrounds. And on the other hand, we're saying, are we just going to pardon the fact that these people got into governance uh, fa through false pretenses, uh, basically lying to their constituents and to the government that they work for, uh, and now hold that uh, that coveted position? So absolutely, it's a, it's a big crisis, and uh, there's there's no real uh, there's no real easy solution. The government can't uh, pardon these MPs because under the, the constitution, uh, if you're a dual citizen, you're automatically ineligible. So there's nothing that the government or the opposition can do about that. If uh, if an MP is a dual citizen, then they're out. That's the Law, law of the land. What my, my point was going to be is, uh, since it is a constitutional crisis and there probably has to be some legislative uh, solution, uh, what is our best move? Is it to move towards the status quo of getting all the people that were already in the government hours kind of sticking to what, um, what the constitution says? Or are we going to change that? Are we going to let people uh, that have dual citizenship uh, start to start to uh, hold office. I think maybe uh, the second one is kind of a more pragmatic approach because uh, I think maybe Australia today is a very different country than it was um, some years ago, especially when the constitution was written. And right now it's not a complete stretch of the imagination to think that people that are in government have uh, very backgrounds. So that's what I meant. Not so much that it's kind of like a presidential part. And it's like, are we going to change the rules? to allow people that don't necessarily have the qualifications today to have the qualifications tomorrow. Well, when the Constitution was written in 1901, Australian citizenship didn't actually exist. That didn't come into effect until uh, 1948, okay. which it's been highlighted that uh, most of these people getting knocked out are uh, British uh, citizens uh, by, uh, by descent. Uh, and so I I've made the point maybe we should just abolish uh, Australian citizenship, and we were all referred back to being uh, British <laughs> subjects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's probably not the most pragmatic approach, but yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, something has to be done. Uh, and again, what what are we going to do, and how is it going to play to our, to the constituents, to these people's constituents, and to the government? Um, 
uh, as a whole if we just decide to allow these people who either blatantly lied or were ignorant to the legislative um, sort of underpinnings of this to remain in office. But then again, how is it going to affect the government to just kind of cleanse all these people, which apparently are a lot, and replace them with people that are just completely 100% Australian? Uh, both sides seem like uh, pretty complicated solutions. What the public wants here is uh, is they want anyone who's a dual citizen uh, out of the parliament. The the view of the public is, you know, we're all meant to follow the the laws. So, you know, our politicians should be able to comply with our most basic law, which which is the constitution. That's why there's been this pressure for uh, an audit of MP citizenship, so we can, you know, clear this up once and for all. Because it's the High Court is now clear that. Uh, citizenship by descent is counts as dual citizenship, and ignorance is is no excuse. And it's it, it, and the the reason why um, both Malcolm Turnbull and Bill Shorten have been resisting is because they know they'll lose a whole bunch of uh, MPs. But it, it's right. it's clear from the the view of the public now that if it does bring down the government, then we're we're, uh, they're prepared for another election to make sure that we have a parliament that is uh, is properly elected with you know people who are eligible to be there. Right. Yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously, obviously, uh, we we would need uh, our politicians to have more integrity for them to say, let's do what's right, uh, despite the fact that it's going to be a complicated transition and we might lose seats and you know other parties might gain more power. Uh, I don't think that that's something that we can, that we can uh, expect from our politicians anytime soon. Unless the, the, the pressure is enormous, uh, will they work against their interests? Uh, for now, I think that, that the, the solutions are not going to be um, that simple. Uh, momentum is growing for a snap election to be held. I've, I've noticed a lot of um, chatter on social media and also by commentators that the only way to uh, basically ins- restore integrity to the parliament is is for a fresh election but you'd also have to make sure that the new parliament is complying with the the constitution so there'll definitely have have to be some sort of uh, vetting process before a person nominates for the uh, House of Representatives or the Senate because at the moment it just you know you get your nomination form and you know you say you know you tick a box saying you know I am you know complying with the Constitution and then that's it. Which seems conveniently uh, simple. Uh, and another thing is that it's not really that simple, right? To check a person's uh, a, a person's citizenship, it's not it's not like a credit report. Uh, I don't think you know. Uh, there, there's a long, li- a long list of uh, of people each country has of who's who's their citizen. I mean, so that's another complicated issue. Like, how are we going to make sure that the people in the future are actually not dual citizenships? I mean, uh, dual citizens rather. Uh, how it, it's really a complicated issue because it's not it's not something that you can check uh, check a background for. So it, it's again, uh, we might we might be headed towards a snap election, but not necessarily without these same issues. Yeah, it's a two-step solution. Like we've we've got to find a way to, uh, you know, vet uh, MP, uh, people before they're elected to parliament. And you know, with the current lot, if there's if there's right. you know twenty or thirty more that are found to be uh, dual citizens, and we need you know, twenty more uh, by-elections, then yes, that's that's when we do need a a general general election to make sure that the the integrity is back into parliament. And it's interesting that. The, the Greens, who most people have uh, said are, are the party that have come out of this uh, crisis with the, the most integrity, uh, because you know their uh, senators who were dual citizens uh, resigned immediately. They were the, one of the first parties to call for an audit. Uh, their uh, proposal is quite extreme. They want to see if they can ask the, the Governor General to uh, dissolve Parliament and call a new election, which would be an unprecedented step because the Governor General acts on the advice of the, the Prime Minister never acts uh, unilaterally. And we, we only saw that happen one time, which was again in 1975. Right. Uh, I guess we think um, how serious a problem is this and does it merit such an extreme solution? I don't think so. I think that there are far better solutions that can be taken up. I, I, I would think that one of the things we could do is just to kind of, uh, kind of look into uh, the sitting MPs at the moment and bet them um, one by one, 
and then get the ones that shouldn't be there uh, out, and then maybe maybe hold elections for for those MPs particularly. However, uh, it it seems it seems a very uh, rash solution to just uh, you know dissolve the whole government uh, and then have uh, a brand new election. It just seems like one of those things that uh, is a pretty extreme solution to an issue which is pretty big but not quite that big. Well, one one thing's for sure is that. Uh, the public, they they want the politicians to just agree, uh, agree to you know compel MPs to provide documentation, and if it means that a whole bunch of you know MPs of, of your MPs get knocked out, then so be it. Just you know resolve this this process. I think I I think that's what the public is after. And I think they're right to be after it, and I think we have to look for a modest and efficient solution as, as opposed to a very extreme uh, sort of crisis solution. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.